Water security has become a greater issue both nationally in Canada and elsewhere in the world as our populations grow and as our industri industrial base continues to expand and our economies continue to grow, we require more and more water. And what we're seeing is that even water abundant places like Canada, that population growth and economic expansion are putting pressure on water systems widely. And in Canada, most of our water is in the north and most of our population and industrial base is in the south. So it's not surprising that sooner or later, Canada should begin to face many of the same types of water issues that have created a global water crisis elsewhere in the world. Canadians still live under a myth of limitless abundance. Most Canadians take water for granted as part of their national heritage. It's only now when we begin to see water scarcity appear widely on the Canadian prairies in places like southern British Columbia that we begin to understand that we could be a water scarce nation also. We're also finding in water abundant places like the Great Lakes region, however, there may not always be enough water for all of the various things that we want to use it for when we want to, to use it, uh, including such things as water supply for municipalities, but also keeping lake, lake levels high enough for shipping and other uh, recreational activities that are so important to the lifestyles of Ontarians and Canadians. So what we're seeing is that, uh, not unlike the rest of the world, we're beginning to face various types of water scarcity that are exacerbated by also by uh, water quality issues. In Canada, we have begun to face uh, serious issues regarding water contamination, not just uh, as a result of activities like the oil sands, but also as an activity of industrial agriculture. We have also have industrial contaminations of water sources widely across the country. And we also have serious groundwater issues from coast to coast. And in fact, we have contaminated aquifers in some parts of the country that we share with the United States. So while Canadians may live by a myth of limitless abundance, our water issues are becoming more serious and assuming a higher profile in our lives and will undoubtedly become a higher and more serious issue politically in the future. I think it's important to note that Canadians really don't understand um, widely our relationship with the United States with respect to water resources. It's very important that we've had a long history since the Boundary Waters Treaty was signed a century ago of cooperation with the United States with respect to water quality and quantity. And that has been a respectful relationship, a model for much of the rest of the world. What we find is very interesting, however, there's this very strong nationalistic sense in Canada that the Americans are after our water. When in fact, most of the projects proposed for transporting water in large quantities to the United States originate in Canada by Canadians. What we find is most Americans, especially those living in the Great Lakes, understand the shared responsibilities and we've seen compacts between the Great Lakes states and provinces that suggest that it's really important to preserve the quality and quantity of water in the Great Lakes and that we can't allow other jurisdictions to remove water from that system. So what we find is that for us to understand what our continental responsibilities are, Canadians have to get their house in order first before they begin considering the thirst of their southern neighbours. Because Canada has a relative abundance of water, it can demonstrate policies that will allow long-term thinking about water security that others may not be able to enjoy. That we should manage our water properly should be an example to the rest of the world. Uh, unfortunately, we're a long way from thinking that way and understanding what others face in terms of water security elsewhere. We do, however, have a great deal of technology that is available to us and that we could share that and uh, provided that we got our house in order, we might also be able to offer examples of water governance that might be helpful in other places. In order for Canadians to truly respond to water security in their country, they need to do three things. First of all, we take water for granted. So the first thing is that we have to understand where our water actually comes from. And the second thing we need to do is to understand how much of it we use and what we use it for. And the third thing in, ter in terms of understanding water security 
every Canadian needs to understand that water is going to be a lot more precious in the future.